top three. We're so glad you've tuned in today. Now, we're going to find out what's happening behind the scenes to get some of your favorite movies to the screen. That's right. Speaking One of in particular. Narnia. Mm. Yes, the Chronicles of Narnia. There was a lot that went on behind the scenes that you don't know about, but you're going to find out some of the secrets of that today on this show because we have an author that's going to be on um, that's got some of the behind the scenes. Yeah, scoops. he's got a lot of good stories, I hear. Yeah, fantastic. Now, we are back again with Preston. Yep, I'm, Yay. I'm, I'm here. I'm and here. Our, and from what I hear, you were able to talk the security guard into letting us broadcast yeah, from this set it's again. Been difficult, Can we get him to come up here? Yeah. Get, can hey, security. Get, yeah, come here. Come here. <laughs> I heard yeah, something. Yeah. How you... Yeah, we, we, we appreciate this guy right here wow. letting us on the set. It, it, only, the, only, this, only this one time. Only this one time. So don't no, don't arrest us. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's good. Oh, he's good. He's supposed to be on the set. You've been working if out? If we have guests come in, will that be okay? I don't know. Just, just, you're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, just we're, we're going to be good. It's going to be good. Just, yeah, okay. we'll be okay. He, he's good. I, <laughs> we're going to work it out. All right. All right. He thank you. He thank pays you. Pays appreciate him it, man. Out burgers. Yeah, yeah. So. Pretty good. I like that guy. Hey, guys, we got a great show for you today. Keep it right here. It's top three. But I'm still here because I've got his word inside my heart I know what it's like to slip and fall I know what it's like to lose it all Hey guys, I'm Melissa. Welcome to News Blast. Let's take a look at what's making news. A Santa Barbara High School principal fights for his job after being involved with a community prayer breakfast. Craig Richter appeared in a promotional video for the breakfast. Well, a school district official saw the video online and filed a complaint saying the principal violated the separation of church and state. Huh. The school district put Richter on a disciplinary performance plan and threatened to actually end his contract. Well, the Alliance Defense Fund says personally endorsing a prayer event that invites people of all faiths to honor teachers does not violate the U.S. Constitution, and they are fighting for his rights. In other news, a new page for ebooks, like that, a new page for ebooks. Google launches an ebook store. This brings more than 3 million books to any device with a web browser. Bonus many of these books are actually free, so you may want to check it out. Turning to music news, Need to Breathe joins Taylor Swift on tour this year. Swift chose the band to appear as a featured artist on all North American dates for her Speak Now World Tour. Need to Breathe plans to record and release its next studio album this year. And finally, a full-scale Noah's Ark is in the works for a biblically-themed amusement park in Kentucky. The theme park will also feature a walled city, a replica of the Tower of Babel, and a recreation of a first-century Middle Eastern village. The park is run by Answers in Genesis, which also runs the Creation Museum in Kentucky. Pretty cool. Might be something to check out if you're in that area. Well, thanks for hanging out with me here on the News Blast set. Let's toss things back over to the main stage and more Top 3. Preston Pollard here with Reba Tony and Mark Joseph. And on today's show, we're going to ask them some simple questions, only yes or no. All right? I have a feeling right. this is going to be hard for Mr. Joseph. Mr. Jo <laughs> Mr. Joseph. Is my dad here? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Now, you th uh, because you write books and you're a man of words, 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 are you going to be able to keep it to a yes or no? Yes. yes. Have you ever had more than six girlfriends, Mr. Joseph? Yes. Ooh. 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 Sugar daddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, would you say that some of your close associates have long hair and tight pants? Yes. <laughs> were, you, were you a player growing up, Mr. Joseph? No. Oh, okay. oh so, that's okay. good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, do you have any experience with music played backwards? Yes. Okay. Break a lot of hearts? <laughs> Ooh. Break any four-year-old hearts? Ooh. Ooh. Four. Yes. Oh. He must have been four, you five at that time? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we have a lot of questions for you. We're going to find out more about Mr. Mark Joseph coming up. You guys keep it right here. It's top three. Thanks for sticking.
sticking around and watching Top 3 today. Hope you guys have been enjoying the show. Rich and I are here with a guest that's been on our show before. His name is Mark Joseph, and um, you've written about so many different things. Um, and now you've actually written a book called The Lion, the Professor, and the Movie. And it's about the Chronicles of Narnia, and you were involved with the making of the, the first film. And, um, and I know I personally am a huge C.S. Lewis fan and a big Chronicles of Narnia Me fan. Too. Read all of the books growing up. Um, did you read them when you were growing up? I did. I, I read them like everybody else, I think, yeah. in America. And, you know, I just I played a tiny role in the first film and developing it and marketing it. And I'm watching these stories happen around me. And I'm like, C.S. Lewis is such a fascinating character. And uh, the more I would read about him, uh, for instance, in the book, I have this story that he went to watch Snow White. Uh, you know, and imagine like this guy with a tweed suit with a pipe, you know, yeah. in the theater. And he's like British. And yeah, <laughs> watching Snow White. I mean, yeah. it just cracked me up. And then he came out and he wrote his friends and he said how much he disliked it and, you know, just all these things. And he didn't <laughs> really? like Disney. And I'm just going, this guy is a character. I've yeah. got to yeah. write about this guy. I've been to C.S. Lewis's house in Oxford. Have you really? Yes, it was incredible. Now, tell people out there that may not be familiar with the stories, you know, like the three people out there. No, just kidding. I mean, there are people around yeah, the world that are watching that sure. may not know who C.S. Lewis is and, and who, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia, what they are. Yeah, so, you know, he wrote these books over several years, the late 40s, early 50s. And um, I quote in the book one time he wrote that fantasy is a great way to smuggle theology into people's uh, minds, basically. And that's what he did, you know. He used these great stories. But he was also sensitive to the charge of, hey, you're trying to you know, like, you know, brainwash kids. He yeah. said, it's not that, but it was a chance to tell the story, uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection, but making it very accessible to, to people and to kids. Yeah. And so he's just this wonderful professor you know, uh, at, at a university, but he's writing books, he's writing fantasy novels, he's also writing more theological works like Mere Christianity and the Screwtape yeah. Letters, which I also love. Yeah. Well, you know, the books have been around for a while, as you've mentioned, but then only within the last, you know, several years have we started to see them on the screen. But I know you've mentioned that in the past they've tried to make the movies. Like, what, what was the process of why they weren't being made? Yeah, so another great, you know, story that I picked up were they would try to do this over the years. There's about 50 years between the books being written and the movies coming yeah. out. And there were some BBC versions and a few, mm -hmm. like, radio... Cartoon yeah. Yeah, things. that kind of thing. Like a flying doll, like the Aslan doll, and <laughs> obviously yeah. like a doll. But uh, there were some bad attempts that were made over the years, and I, I just credit Doug Gresham, C.S. Lewis's stepson, with probably putting the kibosh on these bad versions. But yeah. one of them, you're not going to believe this, one of them had, it was set in the San Fernando Valley, like present day. Like Come here on. in California. Yeah, and instead of these wonderful four proper British kids, it was like four annoying valley kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> saying like a lot and everything. And they're like yeah, skateboarding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then instead of Turkish Delight, it was going to be cheeseburgers and fries. From in and out. Yeah. In and out. And I kid you not, you know, in the research that I did, Janet Jackson was rumored to have going to have a role at one point. That's not true. Back in the 90s. Really? Oh, wow. As one of the kids. And Come I'm on. thinking like nothing against Janet Jackson. There would be really good singer. dancing. But really, is this what we have to do to That's modern movies? Funny. So thankfully, you know, I think the estate and probably yeah. Doug said no, no, no and then waited for the right one to come along. Yeah. Well, why was it important for everyone involved to see the books actually become a movie? Well, you, you know, the, the books are, I mean, books are often the building blocks of great movies, right? I mean, think of the great stories that we've had over the years, and it's just great source material. And so these books, the thing is, if you're just faithful to the books, the movies will be great. I mean, it's just a, why do you have to muck it up and yeah. make it present day and change all the stuff that people right. loved about these books? Yeah. You know, they bought the books mm -hmm. for a reason, and to change it just wouldn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, well, yeah. and what are some of those themes that you think are still resonant today, even though it was written so many years ago? Well, it's sacrifice. I mean, it's the, it's the theme of sacrifice is one thing, right? That Aslan gives up his life for the children, and yet he resurrects himself uh, later. Um, perseverance, right? When you when kids are faced with difficulties, you know, you, you, you work through it. And all these great kind of um, virtues that, mm -hmm. that sometimes we're missing in our modern age are, yeah. are taught. And if you're, you know, if you're a religious person and you're a Christian, then the, the telling of, this, of the story of, of Christ, you know, I mean, that's a powerful, I think that's going to live on in, in the world culture for, cent, for maybe a hundred years, this archetype that's been created. So that even a person who doesn't understand Christianity goes, oh, so you mean that's what happened? Oh, I get yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. Have you heard any kind of stories at all from people who watched the movie in terms of maybe encountering Jesus or, or, or having some, you know, life changes, if you will? 
You know, it's, it's funny you should ask that. I talked to uh, a Japanese lady who I know who lives in Japan, and she saw it. And then she came back to me, and it was like, oh, she's like, oh, I understand it now. So that, you know, Christ had to die because of the deep magic, and then, you know, Edmund, da da da. So she connected it to Christianity, and yeah. suddenly, sometimes the crucifixion, the resurrection story, it doesn't make sense to some people's minds. Like, well, yeah. why would, I remember during the Passion of the Christ, people were going, like, why did he have to be beaten so badly, and why did he have to die? And it was just like this, people couldn't understand it. Yeah. But this makes it really understandable. I think that's what Lewis has given the world, is making Christianity yeah. understandable. That's yeah. great, yeah. Now, were there any challenges in getting this made to such a wide audience? Because, you know, were the movie studios like, we want another slasher film, and, you know, this movie is too, like, clean for us? Yeah, look, there's always this give and take on a set between a director and a producer, and, you know, wanting to do, be a little more edgy, or wanting to do this and that. and. That always goes on, and in the book, you know, that, that shows up. I think that uh, Doug Gresham, C.S. Lewis's stepson, it's amazing because it's not even his real son. It's mm -hmm. just it, J Joy Davidman, who C.S. Lewis married, this is her son. Shadowlands. Shadowlands. <laughs> and so it was just amazing that he kind of has been arranged to be the guardian of things, and he very much is like-minded with Lewis. And so I think he protected a lot of things along the way. You know, when yeah. people wanted to do kind of crazy things, he's like, hey. Yeah. My dad wouldn't have wanted that, as best as he could remember or understand what his dad would have wanted. Sure. Yeah. But there are, you know, C.S. Lewis did say at times that books, you know, it's hard for, for a book to become a movie. He was kind of down on filmmaking in yeah. general at times. Yeah. So who knows what he would have actually yeah. thought. But totally. generally, I think he'd be pleased that all these kids are, are watching, you know, mm -hmm. his movies, basically. Oh, I think it's incredible. And, and you were telling us earlier that there was actually one fan of the books that was dying, you know, I mean, almost literally yeah. dying to yeah. see one of those movies. Tell us about that. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Narnia definitely prevented at least one suicide. There was this girl who contacted the production and she and uh, it was oh, sorry, a psychiatrist of the girl mm -hmm. and he said this girl that I counsel she's tried to kill herself three times and I got her to promise not to because she's a huge fan of the Narnia books and the film is coming out in December so she promised that she wouldn't try again at least until oh my goodness. the film came out. Yeah. yeah. So she was hooked up with Doug Gresham and he kind of actually talked her and counseled her. He's a counselor as well in real life. And so uh, she was there at the opening the night before we had a special, there was a special premiere and she was there. So, you know, she's still alive as far as I know and gone on to do good things. So, yeah, you know, movies can have positive effects yeah. on people's lives. Definitely, yeah. Well, kind of taking that theme and, and running with a little bit more, you know, why is it important for Christians to promote, I think, our values and our, and our faith through this medium? You know, this is how we tell our stories, right? This, in the old days, uh, for centuries, we'd sit around a fire with Grandpa, and Grandpa would tell stories about the old days. Well, we don't have campfires, we don't do that, but this is how we tell stories. So, I just think everybody should, should be telling their stories, and whatever the medium of the day is, yeah. you know, you use it. It's not rocket science, and, um, you know, movies are as good or as bad as whatever they're about. Yeah, yeah. and sometimes I think people, the Narnia books, Sometimes I think people are almost misled to think that it's just for children. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They, are, they have such deep truth in them. Yeah. Don't you think that's even powerful for the adult to be watching in terms of, I love that story you just said from, from Japan, where I think all of a sudden just from seeing some of the imagery and using some of the fiction, things begin to click. And have you noticed that? Because I know you've been doing media for so long. Do you think we should be thinking that way a little bit more, a little bit more abstract, a little bit more creative to reach people? You know, I, I think so, and there's a great story from the Bible. I mean, think of all the stories Jesus told, right? Yeah. He's telling parables. He could have been, you know, saying things directly, but he was telling stories, and, and I think often about the story in the Old Testament about uh, when King David, when the prophet Nathan comes to him, he could have just come and said, hey man, you've been having an affair with Bathsheba, right. I'm on to you, yeah, yeah. you're busted. And David might have said, off with your head. Who do you yeah. think you are? I'm the king. You don't talk to me like that. That's good. But he tells the story, right? And David's like, oh, I yeah. can't believe that guy did Peels that. Peels to his emotion a little bit. You yeah. are that man, right? And David's like, oh, shoot. You know, and he gets him. And there's something about a story that takes you out, it takes you out of the story. It's good. And yeah. you can see it in a different way. Um, tell us about some of the other projects you're working on and how you're kind of yeah. using that to kind of continue the themes that you want to promote. You know, I've, I've kind of moved from just marketing films to producing them, which is a blast. It's fun to have more of a creative input. So I just finished producing a movie called Doonby, D-O-O-N-B-Y. Yeah. And it's a story of a guy named Sam Doonby, played by John Schneider from Smallville and Dukes of Hazard. And uh, he just, he's a wonderful character who shows up in this small town and nobody can figure out who he is. And there's this big mystery. and 
I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. So I'd, oh. I'd, I'd love you to come, come to the things. screening. And there's no book, so we can't read there's the book to no find out book. the ending. There's no book, but uh, there's a reason why his name is his name. And uh, seven great actors in it. Jen Gotson has been here before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert Davi, the scary dude from uh, Die Hard. And, uh, and just, just a great bunch of guys. From... I love that. So, when you're known as that, you know, the scary dude from Die Hard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you see him, man. He's, yeah, he's scary. <laughs> he's scary. And then after that, I've got a, a film on Ronald Reagan coming out hopefully mm -hmm. next year yeah. just call Reagan and it's a biopic of, uh, of our 40th president yes I think I read about that um, well you know as we kind of close our time with you can you give our audience maybe one last encouragement maybe if they've you know are thinking about making movies or maybe they're like trying yeah. to debate like how I can bring my friends to go see movies that are you know reflecting my values like how can they best use this wonderful medium to, to promote our values you know the best thing uh, is to just learn your craft really well you know I think of uh, my friend and, and, and a guy I've worked with quite a bit Ralph Winter mm -hmm. you got, he's been on this set before yes. I think but you know the guy is just like one of the best guys at his craft and so Nobody asks really, you know, what do you believe or this and that. It's just like, oh, that's the best guy. We want him. And, and, he, and that's the, you can't beat that. You know, be the best person that people want to have around. Yeah, that's good. And whatever views you have that may or may not be popular, they just want you for your, for your work. And then you have a chance to impact things. And with, uh, with Ralph, I mean, think of the movies he's been involved with. And I just, I just enjoy hanging around him and, and learning from him. But go to the Act One program in Hollywood. You know, they have a great uh, program great that screen. trains mm -hmm. screenwriters and executives. Uh, you can go to one of the colleges and, and be a film major. There's so many opportunities. And make short films for fil short film festivals. Mm -hmm. You can just shoot a film on your flip and send it in, and maybe you'll win, right? Yeah. So uh, right. you got to just try. Yeah. Well, where can people find out more about what you're doing? Websites? MarkJoseph.com, and then we've got a Facebook page for Doombie, but it's DoombieTheMovie.com, and we've got tons of Facebook friends on there, which is amazing because there's, a, there's a trailer hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. And I'm like, you 2,500 people, this is awesome, but we don't have a trailer well, yet. Well, you know, I got a little bit of an inside <laughs> awesome. tip that there was a little bit of a trailer that, well, that uh, a kind of a sneak peek. That's right. A sneak that peek that, true. that you were you. kind enough to bring to show us today. And the Facebook fans are going to be like, how come you showed it to them first? Yeah. So. Well, here you guys are. You get this exclusive sneak peek at Dune B. So thank Mark Joseph for being here. Thanks, my man. We want you back again some other time. Well, nobody seems to know nothing about you, Sam. 10.50 an hour, plus tips. It's old. Got yourself a bartender. Probably ain't no good drifter. How about a wandering Samaritan? But I ain't gone anywhere I could see. Where you from? Oh, here and there, roundabouts. Never been in jail somewhere. See you tomorrow? Maybe. I want you to think real hard. I ain't a liar. Why was he born so beautiful? My mother went away. Why was he born at all? He's no out of use to anyone. He's no out of use at all. Seems like there's something more to your story than just bumming around. I figured.